What's up, everybody? It's your favorite show, favorite show, Get a Bucket. I'm your host, Trey, and as usual, I hope you're all having a wonderful, wonderful day. And as you can see, we got some guys on the screen that I ain't really seen too often, but expect them to be up here a couple times throughout the year. So we got here Nick and Brandon. Fellas, what's good with y'all? I'll start with Brandon since his name alphabetically goes first. What's up, Brody? How you doing, bro? Pretty good, pretty good, man. You, you seem a little tired. Look like you've been working out a little bit. I don't know. You, you good? You good? Look yeah. like you're all fluffy. <laughs> yeah, a little, little killer workout earlier, but I'm good. I'm okay, good. I got you. I got you. I got you. Keep training, my boy. Maybe you'll get better than me sometime at some point. Now. We'll see how it shakes. Nick, how's everything with you? <laughs> I'm I'm doing well. I appreciate you having me back on. I'm I've got the nice little caffeine running through the veins, so I'm ready. All right, all right. I mean, hey, I, I told you you were gonna come on the show again because hey, fun fact, he had a lot of stats to throw around. So you know, Brandon, as you know, both of you and I know, stats ain't all part of the game, but they do kind of help sway some things a little bit. So and he was also giving a little context as well with those stats. I definitely wanted to bring Nick back onto the show. All right, ladies and gentlemen, we are back. So, look, I told y'all we're going to talk about a couple of divisions, right? So, I think it's nice to start it off with the Northwest Division. And, you know, it, fellas, I, I, I got I to gotta kick it off with this team, right? We got to be electrifying when we're talking about them. So, the Thunder, the Thunder, you know what I mean? Like, he, people how the voice went up just a little bit, like just a little bit, an extra octave, if you will. Um. Is this OKC Thunder gonna be a playoff team? Like, I, like Brandon, I, 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 you know what I mean? Like they, it was a play in team last season. Playoffs means top six. So is this gonna be a playoff team? Um, I think they're capable of being one. Mm -hmm. I wouldn't necessarily say right now they're gonna be a playoff team, but okay. I feel like you know with just Chet coming back healthy, um, I feel like he's going to make a big, you know, big difference. So I wouldn't say that they will for sure be one, but it's definitely a possibility that, you know, they'll be in a running for for a playoff position, I feel, for this possible. Okay, okay. Now, if I had to, say, put some money on it, right, and let's move that top six down to, like, a top eight, but we're talking about playoffs. How much money would you want to throw – on the Thunder making that playoff. You're going to get a little gambly, a little risky, and put a little, a couple dollars on it, your hard-earned money, or are you just going to keep it in your pocket and say you cool? No, I wouldn't I wouldn't put, put anything on it. Uh, I feel like just with the amount of talent they have, I feel like they're definitely capable of getting a playoff you know, spot if they play right, if they stay healthy. But, you know, I'm definitely not willing to pay anything on it. So. <laughs> oh, all right, I guess. I thought he was going to. I was gonna throw a little, a couple bucks they way. Uh, Nick, do you feel any differently about listen, this? Situation? Listen, couple things about a couple videos of Chet Holmgren playing basketball have come out since the end of since he recovered. If he plays anything like he he's been showing in them videos, and they stay healthy, and SGA plays the way he's been doing it. Man, I'm pushing all my chips onto that onto that one, man. I'm pushing all they got. The Dorcher Chamber. They got Rudy Gay. They got they brought Victor Oladipo into the fold. Listen, this they infused this youth with some veterinosity, and they a lot of these guys can defend. A lot of these guys can get buckets. They got Josh Giddy, who's a great playmaker. I, listen, anything can happen, and the Thunder. They even if they get hurt, if everybody gets hurt, like you know, everybody deals with injuries. But man, that this Thunder team can run twelve deep, and I think this team can absolutely win a lot of regular season games and make the playoffs. So yeah, I, I think it, the key thing you said was the regular season games. I think it's a difference between regular season and playoff. Yeah, getting to the playoff, I, I I'm I'm gonna throw like twenty five. That's how they get to the playoffs. Um. At least to play in, at least to play in. But I, I, it'd be risky to go on the playoff route too, because there are a couple of good teams out there. But they are, they, they got a top ten, a fringe top ten player in Shea Gilgis Alexander. Like play in team last season, you know, you got all NBA first team prior year. You have Chet's return, Jalen and Giddy out there. Like they got improved with confidence. I like, I, folks might sleep on Poku. 
But he's a seven footer, versatile. Like they got a good little team out there, and their bench, in terms of if they develop from summer league, I do like them. Isaiah Joe, uh, the shooter. Like I had, I had him on my fantasy team. Buddy was snapping for a couple games. I ain't gonna lie to you. And Who's then Garuba like, too. You said what? Who's Garuba too? He didn't even. We we haven't even mentioned him. There's a lot of guys on here. I I I ain't, I ain't really study Buddy like that. I can't even hold you. I, I, like that, the first I was gonna talk about was Trey Mann because in summer league. Bro was hooping, you know what I'm saying? Like, they got a – like, matter of fact, hold on, I forgot. Let me pull up Dave Ross real quick. They got a nice little team in place. I can't even hold – like you said, they got Victor Oladipo. He was a nice little sign in that the Heat might actually miss. So, I mean, I I do understand, Brandon, your trepidation on this – on on, the, on these Thunder. I, I just – I might lean with, with, uh, with, with uh, Nick here, and I might put a couple bucks down on this. But I'm also understanding, too. I might lose this. Like, Kaysen Wallace is on the squad. I really like Kaysen Wallace. Kaysen Wallace is a big guard, uh, defensive-minded. I like him. I like him as well. But, again, Brandon, I can't be mad at you on your answer. Um, young Bucks, injuries can happen. Like, Chet was just injured last season. Poku is slim, you know. Young Bucks, we'll see what shape. Maybe they got a little lucky last season. Who knows? Who knows? Um, but a team that I wouldn't, I wouldn't want to classify – as lucky right now because, you know, they they in a little situation because, you know, Dame kind of won't out. I'm talking about the Blazers, ladies and gentlemen. We know Dame won't out. Uh, you drafted a player who get who got the same number as Damian Lillard. And ain't like the boy can't change numbers later on in the career, but right now it is a little tricky. Um, but my question here, Nick, is this. What's Jeremy Grant's trade value? Or just value in general, because this player, this man is averaging, last season at least, 21 points. Now, I'm sorry. Hold on. Let me do it like this, too, because I, I already already got the band up here as we as we talking about him. Um, 21 points, and then and I'm rounding up for those of y'all who are wondering why it says 20.5, and I say 21. Uh, five rebounds, two assists, .8 steals and block on 48-40. 81 splits in 63 games played out of 82 total, unless you count Miles Bridges 83. So, I mean, hearing those numbers, understanding, yeah, the Blazers didn't really do too well, but there was a lot to go with that. You had injuries, the timing of those injuries too. Um, what's what's Jeremy Grant's value for you? Again, you see the numbers on the screen, ladies and gentlemen. I read them off to you. What, what, what's your thoughts, Nick? I mean, let's not also forget that he's also pretty – Decent defender. I mean, obviously the Portland Trailblazers weren't even a good. They weren't near. Like he was the only guy who had any kind of defensive value on the team last year, um, who could stay you know, relatively healthy. My um, harsh, but I hear you. Jeremy Grant is essentially uh, his trade value to a team would be if you're trying to get an Aaron Gordon type. Uh, Aaron Gordon for the Nuggets last year was incredible as that tertiary scorer where if he has a mismatch, if there's a switch, and Aaron Gordon's got a guard on him, it's, it's an obvious two. It's an easy two. So Jeremy Grant to a contending team could be that guy who could play defense and get those tertiary buckets. He, should be, he shouldn't be leaned on as a star. He should be leaned on as this tertiary scorer who can go get the hustle, go get the defense, go get some tough offensive rebounds. He's a good offensive rebounder. Like, you know, you add that guy to a team, and suddenly, like, you don't need to give him the ball. He doesn't average a lot of touches per game, and yet he's still averaging 20 points per game. He doesn't need the ball to be a great offensive weapon, and I think that's what every contending team needs. I think to a contending team, this guy's worth multiple first-round picks. If you're really looking for that last piece to win a championship, you got your stars in place. Now, you said multiple first-round picks. Um can I get like a number on it, like two, three, four? Like what we talking about, Rudy Gobert with him? You really for the last piece. Like say Harden and Daryl Morey somehow like have a kumbaya moment and you want to add someone like Jeremy Grant who can get those in-between buckets when, you know, uh, you know, uh, Embiid gets doubled. Easily, I, if I'm Daryl Morey, I'm throwing three, at least three towards him. Like, I don't know how many. Yeah, I, I get what you're saying. That would be that would be nice. Fun fact: the uh, 76ers actually did have Jeremy Grant, I believe, at one point in time. So you know, up. it's tough. But uh, so Brandon, do you do you kind of agree with uh, Nick on 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 
how he viewed Jeremy Grant. He said multiple first round picks, uh, a third option, if you will. Uh, what's your takes? Is there anything different? Yeah, not quite. You know, I don't. I wouldn't necessarily agree with what you know Nick was saying as far as just his value. I personally feel like Jeremy Grant is a more polished, more athletic version. Um, more defensive version of like a Tobias Harris or something like that. I feel like he kind of plays like a very similar role. He's not, you know, always going to be the, he's not going to be the first option. Could be the second option at times, but probably won't be. I think he plays better defense than Tobias, but I I think he's one of those guys where, you know, even though I think every guy should get paid as much as he wants, right? But I don't – I think he's one of those guys that kind of got a, a bigger contract than what I feel like he's actually worth. I feel like Tobias got a big contract. Jeremy Grant has a big contract. But I don't think they're really actually worth that amount. Um, so as far as, like, the multiple first-round picks, I think at max it would be one first round for Jeremy Grant, um, being that he's not an all-star. Um, not an all-star, averages 20. Um, not the first option on the team. So – a 20 elite, I'd say elitish defense at minimum. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, like if you want to say at minimum, good defender, uh, 20 points, shooting 40% from the three, six, nine, lanky. Like, he did good work against Braun about four years ago. Like, I mean, I'm, you know, there's like only one, only one first round, maybe that's tough. Sure. Only one first round, maybe add like a player or a second round to that. But and you gonna yawn at the man's game as you're talking about him. That's disrespectful. <laughs> that's so crazy, bro. <laughs> I, I guess Jeremy, just know that's him right there. That won't me, dog. Like I'm, look, bro. I'm with you all the way, I man. Love, I feel Jeremy, like I love your uncle. Don't hate me. Uh, your horse is my one of my heroes. Please, I'm a Bulls fan. Don't do it. <laughs> I, I'm, 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 I, I, uh, that's so good. So like. I do hear you. I think he's better than Toby, and I like Toby too. I don't mean that no disrespect, Toby. Like he's he's a little younger than you. No, you know it's it's cool. He lanky. Uh, he's more defensive minded. Um, he might shoot better from the three right now. Like I I'd, I'd lean with him as well. But I, to Nick's point as well, I would want him to be a third option, which is kind of what Tobias Harris is like as well. So I think we we might all kind of agree he doesn't need to be necessarily the star or the second option if you want to win championships. We've seen, hey, he can get you 20. And I think realistically, if this Portland Trailblazers team was healthy this season, you might have seen them in the playoffs. Like, you definitely could have seen them in the playoffs. So, I mean, and he would have been their second option. So, I mean, I, I, you, can, you can make some things shape. It's just if you want to be a contender with Jeremy Grant on the team, I think that third option, maybe even fourth, would be best. But. He does deserve that paper too. It, it's it's so tricky because like Tobias Harris, at one point in time, I was like, yeah, he kind of deserved this contract because you know look what he did for the Clippers. Like Jeremy, he been hooping, it, it won't to the same degree as Toby. So I might think maybe he don't, he, he shouldn't get it the same amount, but he still also has has deserved off his play. I can't be mad at off his talent. He cool. Like I like I like Jeremy. I like Jeremy. Um, but uh. You know, kind of transition on to that next team game. We're gonna talk, we're gonna talk about the Jazz, fellas. Let's jazz it up real quick. Now, this player, let me scoop up real fast. But I need to. There it is. Talk to me. Um, this player, I, I'm, I, I'm cool with. Like, if you look at his numbers, you can be like, bro is all right. Like, bro is actually a little bucket. And we talking about Colin Sexton, fellas. Um, should the Jazz look to trade or keep Colin Sexton? And and, and matter of fact, let me. Let me go ahead and throw the man up here like this with a couple. There we go. Flat out. So, like, you know what I'm saying? Like, we got Colin up here. Now, if you look at the numbers, like, they kind of smooth. Like, we got for last season, even though he only played for about 48 games, 14 2 4, 0. 0.6 steals, 0. 0.1 blocks on 51 39 82 splits. That ain't bad. And for the career, we talking 46, 38, 80, 83 splits. Like, that's pretty solid right there. But I I I I don't I don't I don't like bro starting for me. I can't hold you. And now it's like, well, should they look to trade him or keep him? Because he is 24. And at first for a while, it's like maybe he's 26. But he he's an unrestricted free agent at the age of 27 when, when his contract ends. So Brandon. Would you rather? Would you like to 
keep Colin Sexton if you're the Utah Jazz because you're not going to win a championship right now. And he's a really quality six-man option right now, like easily. So would you trade him or keep him? I would keep him. I think you go ahead and you pay someone all that money. I think he, his contract was like 80-something million, like over like three years. But I think you you pay someone like all that money and, you know, I, I feel like it makes no sense to really just get rid of him. Mm-hmm. Um like you said, I think he's a very very good option at the six man. I look at Colin Sexton, and even though they don't have identical situations, but I look at Colin Sexton, very like similar kind of to Duncan Robinson. You give a guy a very decent contract, and because of how he's performing, right, and how you feel like he's going to perform for you, um, and then they end up, you know, not necessarily being consistent or performing to the best of their ability, mm-hmm. and then you end up having to put them on the bench for some time. And then sometimes they may have streaks where you throw them in a starting lineup because they're hot and you take them right back out. So I think they're very similar in, in a lot of different ways. Obviously two different type of players used in two different ways, but I think they're very similar as far as just getting a lot of money and not really knowing where you're going to put them. Sometimes they can start. Sometimes they come off the bench. Um, but to answer your question, I don't think they should get rid of him. I think he's still a solid player. He's young. Um, Hasn't really had a lot of injuries. I know he had, like, one major injury where he took a lot of time. But, um, you know, very – I feel like he also has that lion in him too. So he's one of those players that, you know, as far as the mentality-wise, you should keep around. Um, and then, obviously, with the contract and stuff like that. I feel like it just makes sense. So, yeah. Okay. Because I, I – I so I get you on that whole lion part, right? He's a dog. Like, I get that when he was at Alabama, you know, he was on, what, a three on five or four on five, and they won the game. Like, it's pretty crazy. Like that's like that's nothing to scoff at. Um, I remember you know hearing his teammates saying, "Oh, he doesn't know how to play basketball." But like, bro, it's still been hooping. You know what I'm saying? Like that's mental fortitude, that's toughness right there. I appreciate. So I understand why you want to keep him. Some intangibles he might have. Um, I think my main issue was I have Jordan Clarkson right now. I'm probably going to look to trade Jordan Clarkson because he's a little bit older than his prime years, and I'm trying to look at the timing perspective, unless you like Jordan Clarkson that much, you want to keep him around. But he might be your sixth man at some point in time. Um, I don't know if Colin Sexton's going to be that point guard for you. But then when I saw his age, two at 24, I got to keep him around. Like, I do like his production. But, I mean, Nick, do you kind of disagree? I think Brandon and I are kind of in cahoots right now. Do you disagree with us, or are you joining the team as well in terms of keeping Colin Sexton? So. I was kind of on the fence, and then Brandon brought up his contract, and I don't know if you guys saw my reaction, but I was like, there's no shot they gave him $80 million. And then I looked at his contract, and I was like, oh, my goodness. Yeah, he's been, yeah, he, he gave like, like 17 mil this season. I think it yeah. goes up incrementally after that each season by a couple mil. Yeah. Years. So I think – so my initial instinct was you got to – you probably want to see, because he is 24, and he improved. He was much better offensively this year than he has been in his career. Um, like, his, like his efficiency got a lot better. His, you know, he got a limited number of, of, uh, opportunities, but he looked more in control. He, obviously he still needs to work on the playmaking concept, which who knows if that's ever going to click, but as a lightning bug, sixth man, like bench sort of, uh, initiator, mm-hmm. I think as an attacker off the bench, I think you should see what you have in him for a year or so. And then sort of also be gauging the value as sort of he, you know, always have the phone, you know, on for him. Mm -hmm. And uh, just see sort of as he plays and goes up and down or maybe even goes, you know, start skyrocketing or going media, like just falling like a meteor. See what what the offers are. And um, I think... I, I I think you sort of ride with him. I'm I'm with you guys. I think you have. I mean, when you give him eighty million, you have to. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you gotta give him a little chance. You gotta give him a little chance. I do know on this team, you have. I want to I want to make sure Chris Dunn is still on that squad. But I mean, Chris Dunn, Keontae George, although Keontae Young, um, or he's young, uh, you know, that's still something to worry about at some point in time. Like, uh. Clarkson, who basically, yeah, Clarkson's still there. Like I, I, I could just see Buddy kind of losing, losing a little bit of. Like I think in terms of defense, I would, I would trust Keontae George 
long term over college sex, and that's what I'm curious about. How is that how is that long term progression going to go? But I, like I said, his his age and also the contract helps out, but more so his age. I think for me was like was my thing. But like yeah, to, like like Brandon said though, you give someone eighty million. I don't know if I'm necessarily willing to let you go unless I can get a nice ball of young buck back in return, which he is still young. So maybe someone is willing to do that. Who knows? But, you know, we'll keep it pushing. We'll keep it moving with the uh, Timberwolves because they do got some young fellas on their team. But um, it's kind of interesting, actually, because, you know, we're talking about contracts. Gobert and Cat actually make up a lot. <laughs> No, nah, it's like 36% of the cap. So I'm like, all right, if that's the case, I mean, 41 and 36 mil, which actually that math might be off, so I need to look back at that cap hit that they gave me, the cap numbers that they hit me. But that's a lot That's a lot of numbers right there. Anthony Edwards, although he's on his rookie deal, you know, he's not getting paid as much. Mike Conley out there. I expect him to produce pretty well. But Gobert and Cat are getting a lot of the financial push from this Wolves team. So do you expect either of these players, Nick, we'll start with you, to earn his contract? And again, let me give you all the numbers. Gobert is averaging 41 mil. And last season he gave 13 points, 12 rebounds, one assist. 0.7 steals and 2.1 blocks on 66 0 64 splits in 70 games out of 82 plays. Then you got Carl Anthony Towns who gave you 21 8 5 0.7 steals, 0.6 blocks on 50 37 87 splits in 29 out of 82 games played. So again, do y'all think either one of them will earn their contract? Again, Nick, we'll start with you. So I mean, unless Gobert somehow thinks he can get a lot of money on the open market, the first time they're going to get out of these contracts is going to be 2026-27, um, <clears throat> when Gobert hits the unrestricted free agent market. The problem with that is that Gobert is 31. Uh, so Still his defensive of prowess kind of it's, – it's, I mean, obviously he's always going to be 7'2". He's always going to have that crazy wingspan. He's always going to have those instincts. But offensively, you can't make up for it. And Carl Anthony Towns is kind of the opposite. Like, he's a great offensive center. But mm -hmm. defensively, he leaves a lot to be desired. Now, obviously, Cat's a better defender than Gobert is offensively. But, I mean, and even that might be debatable. But the problem is, you have two big men that kind of want to be around the same space because Cat, as good of a shooter as he is, he likes to be in that mid post. And of course, Gobert can't exist anywhere except right next to the basket. Um, so they're not going to earn their contracts together. Although I, I think they are both max level players, or at least when they sign them, mm -hmm. this is not going to work together because this isn't 2001 anymore. Like you can't have two guys who try to exist in the post at the same time when neither one of them is a good playmaker and neither one of them sort of makes, like they don't really fill up for the other's weaknesses effectively enough. And worse yet, it seems to me from what I've been hearing, like in other reports across the, the net, mm -hmm. Edwards doesn't like Gobert. They've been playing for one year. Like we heard about what happened with Donovan Mitchell and Gobert. Yeah. But now it's Edwards who doesn't like him. And I'm like, is Gobert like, I don't know what Gobert's doing in the locker room, but yeah, his his shooting guards don't like him apparently. I mean, so his his problem is, buddy just don't got an offensive bag, and it can be frustrating a little bit from a guard perspective because now they know the bigs and everybody, the defense ain't gonna help off onto the big because I ain't really worried about Gobert unless he get to the rim. So I mean, I'm I'm, I'm not really caring about Gobert. I I can understand that. Um, but but, but I mean, yeah, I mean, but here's the thing though. You said that they don't complement one another, and I, I think they do. Funny enough, I came to that conclusion before they even hit the floor because I was playing 2K. I understand it's a video game, ladies and gentlemen. But when Gobert saved me from the computer, and I'm playing a Hall of Fame, by the way, and my man blocked Buddy at the rim, and I was like, oh, word. Okay, they do complement one another because Cat was on the other side, and I had Cat moving like Giannis. 
He don't have the same fort- mental fortitude as Giannis, but he has a he has a defensive capability where you know he can play outside. He can be a rim protector. He he has not shown it. I know he can though, because at Kentucky he won't that bad. So it's not like the buddy. It's not like the brother don't have it in him. So that's what I'm looking to see out of Cat. I can work with. I can expect to see him trying to push forward and be a little more aggressive this season. Like Gobert, he got like two more years left. Like so, you know, maybe he might get a little. I think he got a chip on his shoulder too. Like fellas, I think they might play up to that contract. Maybe not Gobert as much, but I mean. I don't know, Brandon. You heard Nick. You heard me. What's your thoughts, fella? Where, where, where are you landing? Are you, are you agreeing more so with Nick or myself? If I say I, yes, I, he says no. I agree with um with Nick. I don't, I don't feel like their games really complement each other. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, in two K, it is kind of cool when you know Gobert can come in the clutch and make a block. But at the same time, when they're both on the court in, in real life, uh, I feel like the objective of the game is to put the ball in the hoop more than the other team. And I feel like that's what the Timberwolves kind of struggle with. Um, so, I mean, you know, we, we already knew Gobert wasn't offensively talented. And then you take a guy like Carl that needs the ball, um, who always doesn't, you know, isn't leading the team in scoring, right? So it, it's, it's, a weird, it's a weird situation. I feel like I don't think that's a team that will ever really win with that lineup. I think they need more, more offensive power. I think they honestly should get rid of Gobert um, or make a decision which big they're going to choose to keep. Um, did, did I hear you say that uh, Edwards is still on his rookie deal? Yeah, he's still on his rookie deal. He got his extension. So usually the good rookies, they usually get extended on that seven to like seven years because it's on that rookie extension. Okay. Yeah, yeah. not for sure. So um, I feel like it's obvious Edwards is going to be there for some time. I think they're going to keep Cat. Um, hopefully, I mean, if it don't work out between him and Cat, we early, it's gonna be early on too, because I mean, if this is final season based on sports track. I think Cat was actually extended last season. Was he? Let me yeah. See. Let me double check and let me find out. Like I, was like, I thought he was. Yeah, I'm reading the screen. It's really weird. Those the like the screen that I was looking at too was like I thought estimate meant if they re-sign him when you said he's on his last year, but then I looked at their contract and he is on the supermax as of last year. So sports track is weird. <laughs> okay, so we have bad intel. Okay, I appreciate that. I was about to say they usually be holding me down. But I could have sworn we were talking about this yet last year. <laughs> okay, okay. So so he's signed for the Supermax, so he got four more years left on it because last last year he got signed to Supermax. Yeah, seems to be. Okay. Everybody about that one, Mini. And I swear, okay, that's crazy. Hold on. It's it yeah, I I mean, listen, he changed the game, don't you know? I mean, he can. I mean, there's not too many bigs that have shot. There's not a center really that shot a shot like 38% plus from three for their career. I mean, that is technically changing the game to a degree. You know, Dirk Nowitzki, but I mean. But he didn't shoot a lot of threes. He shot long teams. No, no, I'm, I was talking about 38% from the three. Like, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, but that, that, like, on the volume, I guess. Okay, not bad, not bad. But long story short, though, fellas, I don't hear no love for Gobert or Cat. Um, Playing up something next year. Okay. All right. All right. I'm I'm trying to show a little love for the Wolves, but I'm also a little optimistic. That's also one of my flaws. I, I'm trying to work on it. But yeah, I'm 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 optimistic on the Wolves. But we're gonna move on over to the Nuggets then. Let's go ahead and talk about the Nuggets, fellas. Because they are defending champions. Um, long story short, is there a depth worry here? Because we now, you know, in the playoffs, I know, you know, rosters tighten up. But these men, like they, they play about six deep. I think Brown, Brown averaged like seventeen minutes, and oh no, Green averaged like seventeen minutes, and Brown averaged like seven, like thirteen or something like that. Christian Brown, I mean, uh, so they like those two players met, made eight. But outside of those two, everybody else played twenty five plus or nothing. So you know, it's six people deep essentially, and then you lose Green, uh, and and then you bring in Justin Holiday. And then two rookies, Jalen Pickett and Julian Struthers. Do the defending champs have a depth issue, Brandon? I mean, no. I mean, of course not. If you if you could win a championship last year, and you know the only person you really lost was like what Green, Jeff Green, Jeff Green. Jeff Green. 
bring back basically the the same identical roster plus adding more people to it. Um, I think they're you know probably in a little bit better you know. It's better. Two rookies, it's two rookies though. Like one from Gonzaga, he played a couple seasons over there. Julian struggles. I like him. He cool. And then Jalen Jalen Pickett. Uh, I don't want to mess up where he came out of, but like I know he's out of uh, Rochester, New York. And I mean, I saw him in summer league. He did I. Right. So I mean, he got a good game to him. Like, but who did they lose? Who did they, they lost, really? Lose? They lost Jeff Green. That is a big piece now. I mean, Jeff Justin Holiday six six, but Uncle Jeff played a vital role for them. Even though he only played about seventeen minutes, he was he was quite nice for them. So I mean, yeah. I don't think I don't think missing Jeff Green mm-hmm. would you know if they didn't have I don't if they don't. If I don't feel like they had roster issues last year and they won the championship, mm-hmm. uh, I definitely don't feel like they had roster issues this year, and without just Jeff Green, so I think I think they're pretty pretty solid, if not a little bit better. So, okay, okay, them. yeah. So my only trepidation with that is they brought in Justin Holiday, which is cool, nice little forward. So like I said, six six, but Jeff Green about six nine. So I can throw him on the block for the fives and bigs a little bit better than I can with Justin Jefferson. I mean, Justin, uh, oh, my God, Justin Holiday. So that, that that's why I look at it as, like, there's no real replacement for that. They didn't do enough for me. But I don't know, Nick, what's your thoughts on this? Do you, do, do you side with myself or do you side with Brandon? He said he cool, Nuggets is chilling. And I'm like, you know, I might have a little trepidation over that. Uh, I think this is going to be one of those instances where a team who is going to be a true threat in the playoffs might drop off a little bit in the regular season because of the lack of depth. But because losing Bruce Brown hurts and losing Jeff Green hurts, and I'm sure some someone somewhere, you know, some Celtics fan is like, I still believe. Uh, but uh, it's 35 years old, give it up. But uh, but I, I mean, I still think they could they have some guys from last year who can fill into a spot pretty well. Peyton Watson, uh, Zeke Naji are their two backup bigs right now. And I mean, I like Zeke. I like Zeke Naji. I think he's um, I think he's a solid backup center who can sort of fill in both the four and the five spots. Um, you know, in 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 spurts. I'm not going to say like throw him in for 28 minutes a game, but um, Christian Braun, I refuse to pronounce it Brown. Uh, yeah, bro, that's, bro. Not that name, that's not how that name's spelled. Not how it, nope, we're not doing it. Uh, yeah, I don't, I don't like saying Braun too much. Like, it, I feel like I'm saying Braun all the time. Like, oh, LeBron James, nah, Christian. Like, mm, I don't know. And so I, I get, think we still got Reggie Jackson, right? So, I mean. Yeah, but Reggie didn't get no tick last year, though. True, true. They played but, Reggie last year. Remember, I said they played six deep, and they, Reggie was they, not. They, like, they occasionally brought in Braun for a seventh guy, but like. Yeah, I mean, uh, in the regular season, I think they might suffer a little bit from that lack of depth, but I'm not too worried about it because if they stay healthy, like relatively, and make it into the playoffs, this is still the darn Nuggets. Watch out. All right, so you ain't got no trepidation. All right, I mean, I it's a long season. You know, injuries do pile up. We've seen Jamal Murray go down a little bit, but they have been fortunate thus far. Well, I guess not really because MPJ went down too. But, I mean, they do have the talent. Um, injuries are part of the game, so that's got to factor for everybody. So, I mean, I, I like I said, I got issues with them because I would like to see a little bit more depth, but they also got the talent from a starting five perspective. But no, now, that, that's all I want to talk about with the Northwest Division, though. So, look, what we're going to do is take a quick little break, come back in a little bit. But, uh, ladies and gentlemen, thanks for rocking with us so far. Hope you all enjoyed it. And uh, come back. We'll, we'll come back very soon. So, stay with us. Hope, hope, so, stay. Oh, my God, I cannot talk today. So, stay with us very soon. But, um, fellas, I, I greatly appreciate this. Went a little bit longer than I thought it was going to be, but um, definitely had some good conversation. So, um, ladies and gentlemen, like I said, I will definitely have you all see uh, Brandon and Nick again. I'm, I, I don't know next time I'm going to ask him, though, because, you know, I want people to keep coming back onto the show so you can't keep utilizing your, your people's plugs like that. But, um, but fellas, before we close up shop, do y'all have anything you want to say? See, I keep, he always want to be leaving every single time. I get you, Brandon. I get you. You don't have to go to another battery now. <laughs> no, but you could. No, but not Nick. You got anything you want to say before we close up shop? I appreciate you having me back, and uh, you know this was fun. I, unfortunately, I kind of feel the last two times I've been on here, it's run a little long, so I kind of feel personally responsible. <laughs> but 
Uh, next time I'll try to keep it short and sweet uh, as much as I can. But I appreciate you having me on. No, I appreciate the combo. Like it's always gonna be content to edit and post out there. So I'm I'm I'll, I appreciate this, Brandon. What you got to say for us, boy? Before we call, before the close up shop. I can't hear you. We can't hear you. Someone get John Boy. Someone get John Boy on this. Read lips. Yeah, but oh, go just give us a second. Give us a second. Hold on. Just one second. Nah. Nah, hold on. Write of signs. You can just write it on paper. <laughs> just hold it up. <laughs> Accessibility. American Sign Language. Hey, hey, log out and come back in. Leave and come back in. Yeah, there we go. Let's see what happens. Let's see what you... He's back. We're good. All right, what you want to say before we close up shop? <laughs> <laughs> no, I appreciate you having me on here, Trey. I appreciate um, uh, being on here again, and I look forward to the next time. Oh, definitely, definitely. Like I said, I apologize for it going a little long. We'll try to keep it shorter next time. De most definitely, most definitely. But, uh, fellas, I'll see y'all again at some point in time this week, I'm sure, or at least sometime in the month or whatever. We're going to hoop at some point in time. But, people, hope you all like this video. You know, like, subscribe, comment, tell anyone who's anyone about the show. Uh, my name is Trey. I'm the host of Get a Bucket. Hope you all have a good one. Take care. <laughs>
your luck ran out though. It was actually 1947. Uh huh. 47. Yeah. So you know. It happens. It is what it is. You know, it is. I was like, they saw Bill Russell coming in, they were like, we need to follow this guy more. <laughs> okay. All right. So, uh, just to clarify, I, I wanted to do that one for the show as well. So, like, when we do those, y'all know the answers. So, you know, we can speed past those real quick. We don't have to take too much time on that gap trivia part. Um, like, I'll go back and forth between both of y'all. So, y'all, we've already been through that. But outside of that, it should be smooth sailing. Y'all boys ready? Sure. <laughs> Man, I do want to say, I like only a, a Lakers slash Kobe fan could have a consensus, regardless of our individual opinion, consensus top five, top three player of all time, come to their team, win a championship, and be like, I, who knows if he's going to get off my team. <laughs> well, I mean, respectfully, it depends on who you talk to, because like, that brother is not in my top five. I mean, just con- I want to say consensus. I mean, the majority opinion. No, I agree with you saying not nah, like I. It's more so from an age. Like if he was in his, if this was his calf, the second stint calf day, I hear you. Um, Listen, if he was on the Bulls right now, I'd be like, never. <laughs> yeah, no, it was just his age. That's all, bro. Uh, 